Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to return to the subject of the Storaxa, the crowdfunded Kickstarter NAS that we talked about here on the channel a few days ago. Now I'll be straight with you, I didn't think I'd be talking about this NAS again for another six to seven months. Maybe on a date and news of the week video but that's really it. But so much has happened in the last few days that here we are back in the studio and I want to talk about it. But it's worth highlighting, today's video is going to cover a lot. And along the bottom of the screen, maybe I've done the pointing in the wrong direction, there should be chapters there to different things. So there's a lot to digest in this video, but go ahead and skip to where you think it's appropriate to you now, or just generally I would recommend watching the whole thing for a grander scope. But straight away off the bat, why did that video get made? Well, first and foremost, again, as mentioned in the comments since then, that was a video based on your, um, on responses that I'd received from numerous members of the subscriber base, the followers of the platform, and on the social media channels. And ultimately, it was a lot of people asking for what I thought of the project, would I back that project, and there were people that were back in the project that were starting to get cold feet. I looked into it, and even prior to that, I'd already been made aware of it. Now, this video now is about me readdressing some of the things that were in that video that since that video I've either learned were incorrect or things that we're still waiting for confirmation on. Another thing I'm going to highlight in this video is some of the things that are barriers to either people that were considering backing or potential barriers for the future of that project. Now some of them are going to be Storax's problem, and some of them are inherent to the crowdfunding Kickstarter model. This video is not about the people versus Kickstarter, but unfortunately, these are still going to be inherent barriers in that model, because, you know, let's face it, as good as crowdfunding can be for people to get precisely what they want, there has to be a balance between the creator and the audience. And unfortunately, it's that blurred line which can lead to a lot of these walls and hurdles along the way. Let's remain as subjective as we can be. And I say we, I mean me, of course, in this video, but hopefully you as well when you're watching a video like this. Let's talk about um, the, uh, let's readdress some of the stuff from before, some of the points that were covered. So first and foremost, some of the things that I either got wrong or some of the things that I didn't dig deeply enough into. Uh, first and foremost, we are talking about a project that has a well in excess of 2,000 uh, comments at this point. And a lot of the issue when it comes down to researching videos is the information you kind of have to read from these resources and in the case of one of the points that I made with regards to motherboards that you can purchase on third-party websites again such as AliExpress I referenced that as a price point for a motherboard that potentially or at least at that time potentially I thought could be used in a system like this and of course it was highlighted to me that there were cheaper options out there and yes of course there's bulk buying potential there and buying direct from point of uh, distribution there are savings to be made. I still stand by that point about the margins within a project like this, and I think those margins are what a lot of people are really bringing focus on. But of course, there are ways and means to get hardware produced en masse uh, to get that a cheaper price point there. Another thing I highlighted in that video was that in a lot of the project videos, I didn't like that I couldn't see direct connection between the unit and the kind of device, the client device that was interacting with it. Apparently, the videos have been produced uh, since then that show direct interface on their uh, backers area, something I do want to talk about later on, inherently problematic in the Kickstarter model, but in according to the comments there, that has been addressed there in that section. Another thing I want to talk about there is to do with a PS5 stat that was detailing a lot of, you can store this many PS5 games on there, and in my video I did highlight that you can't play games off a remote access storage like a NAS for PS, you can't play PS5 games off a remote access storage. Since then, several users have highlighted to me that there is a technique to do that using a bridging mechanic in between but again then you would be talking about a one gigabit uh, tunnel there you'd also be talking about a uh, ps5 games would never run like that and also whether you were using ps4 games in a methodology like that they would run you know over a one gbu when they would be running local on a sata connection or they would be running ssds on a local connection either way I think it's a little disingenuous to state that fact on that video in the way that they did because I don't think you 
could realistically store and utilize that data in that way but i have to at least put my hand up to say that there is a technique with which one could at the very least connect with the storage area via your console on a network attached storage system there now moving slightly forward from that i think it's worth talking about potential barriers there because one of the biggest barriers I think for outsiders and one of the reasons I think a lot of people were contacting you know NAS compares about this project is the difference that this project has to view from a backer and a non-backers point of view again this is more about a crowdfunding out uh, the kind of the build of crowdfunding but unfortunately this is something that is not translated as well as it could have in terms of communication so let's dig into those hurdles there. The first and foremost is the way communication has been relayed. Kickstarter has very uh, rigid rules on the way information can either be edited down the line or added to an existing campaign. It makes a great deal of sense. It's if you were to if you were able to change the past, so to speak, you could pretend you've either said things when you haven't or you haven't said things when you did. Now. When it comes to this Kickstarter, just like any other Kickstarter, the bulk of the ready information for non-backers comes from that comment thread. Once again, in excess of 2,000 comments, with um, some of those comments needing to be branched out and only a certain number of comments loaded on a page at a time. The point I'm trying to make here is imagine trying to find out whether you should invest in a company when all you could in, uh, find and get for real-time information other than a Facebook page was one comment thread that is what we're talking here so the result is i can see why um communication and definitely kind of apprehension for users looking at a campaign like this is where it is when if you're outside of the bubble looking at the kickstarter methodology in that comment section there some of the comments seem perhaps co um, contradictory to ones earlier in the thread. Sometimes even doing a simple search is just not sufficient. And although, once again, this is not a store acts of fault here. This is to do with the model and the way Kickstarter has had to create a rigid line of balance between creators and backers. It still leads to uh, a comment section where it makes it tremendously hard to follow the nature of the project. Which leads to the second barrier, which again, I think um, the, uh, the creators of any Kickstarter project can work around. And that is that probably the most core important information that people want to see. A lot of it is behind a backer only area. Now, once again, I get it. They want to make sure, as Kickstarter, not StoreAxa, that the most important updates for those that have backed makes it to them. But some information being behind a backer-only wall creates barriers for people. Now, again, there are settings you can do for work around this. You can also share that information on other platforms and link to it. Yes, that takes time. And yes, we would rather creators spend a lot more time working on the product. But if you are looking to get people to invest in your product and you have vital information such as the updated video there with the cable connections to show people putting it behind a backers only area so you can hold on to backers um faith right now but not putting it easily where other people can access it at least at the time of recording is something of a barrier for some users and can give people a slight sense of disquiet. And the fact this only arrived a few days before the end of the campaign, I think also added to some users slight sense of apprehension about willing to go into this project. Another area of apprehension comes down to the nature of comments themselves. And again, I know this video isn't the people versus Kickstarter, but at the same time, it has to be said that like a lot of comment threads that reach that length, there is an unfortunate element, slight as it might be, of toxicity. And there's several examples in that thread of some people being slightly apprehensive to ask relatively reasonable questions and then being shouted down about it. And I think, yes, you know, if you don't, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen and, you know, investing in crowdfunding is arguably you know inherently risky again uh, recent research uh, that i was making kickstarter there 40 percent give or take off projects to date have succeeded or if you want to get class glass half empty about it that means 60 percent failed still nonetheless even if people are apprehensive and need to be 
arguably more aware of the risks before they go into these things i think that still doesn't you know excuse elements of toxicity and possible slight echo chamber vibes amongst that comment section in part again it's not storax's job to dismantle that this isn't their job to do that but this only adds to why a lot of users may feel slightly apprehensive when they are shouted down it creates a feeling of hmm Am I talking to real people or not? And again, this isn't Storaxa. This is the Kickstarter methodology and that comment thread being the way it is in one giant block. It breeds this, hence another reason why users may have been apprehensive. Next up, at the time of that previous video, there was a consistent and growing a question regarding the company themselves, letting people know a little bit more about them, something I did raise in that video. Now, by that, obviously, as raised several times in the comments themselves, a lot of users are like, I don't really want to know the name of the dog of the person that's making my product. I just want the product to work. I get that. That makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, when you are dealing with investing in a project, yes, it's great to have fast replies. Yes, it's good that they've got good knowledge about the tech of the thing. And it's great when you see people genuinely passionate about what they're doing. But we are still talking about an investment for a lot of people and to know about the connections with production to know about the uh, you know what they're going to be doing about logistics and understanding the to and fro of rmas and stuff like that that is something that people want to know about we don't want to know about you know uh, where you live or your dog's name what we want to know is your um actual history within this industry and moreover a kind of commitment that you know what you're doing to produce these products. Now, this is something that is slowly rolling out in that comment section, but I would say it is not as crystal clear as a lot of users would like. And once again, continues to add to that element of apprehension that people were feeling. Which kind of brings me to the crux of this video. One of the big takeaways that came from for me in the last few days since that video is, Yes, I knew a handful of users had invested in this, uh, you know, supported this project financially, whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, I didn't realize just the scope of how many people had. And after that video, the number of people that got in contact about it really surprised me. So with that in mind, given the amount of interest in this product, uh, this project, and the amount of people that want to see how this rolls out, and indeed myself, as I said several times in that video, I want to see a product like this, I'm going to go ahead and back it. I'm not suggesting that anyone else should take my backing it as a suggestion that they should do likewise, or that in any way validate or support you're going for or not going for this project. The reason I'm going for it now is to keep you updated. I've, I've backed this project now. It's happened right now at the time of recording. Let's see how that pans out. Why am I doing this? Nice and simple. In many cases, they are right. There needs to be this opening up in the industry. As mentioned in the previous video, right? now we have got a market that has a lot of turnkey solutions set up easy bang good to go combined hardware software solutions that need to be sold at premium because of that software and at the same time we have a market of do-it-yourself do diy build your own pcs with access to a myriad of open source free software for people to use there is a big gap in the market there in the middle for the people that are prepared to put their good device together to get you value for money and give you the option of that open source this is very much a product like that hence why i was genuinely interested in it and still am so again we are going to back this project don't let it be any validation for you doing it but i'm going to update this once a month until the device arrives with us here and from there we can review it firsthand to let you know whether it's worth your data so there you go i hope this addresses a number of the questions of the previous video as well as hopefully gives you more perspective into everything that's going on with the whole Storaxa, Kickstarter, NAS. Will it happen? Won't it happen? Is it good? Is it bad? And ultimately, what does this mean for the NAS industry moving forward? Right now, I'll tell you, I really hope it arrives. And right now, I'm hoping that six, seven months from now, we get to make a video where I address everything I've said here and gone. This NAS is changing an area of the industry, that the NAS brands are listening to something like this and taking note, realizing that a new kind of middle ground begins to emerge and most of all that this can be a solution that becomes the textbook the cornerstone of NAS and servers being developed on Kickstarter that people can point at and go there's a success story 
On the other hand, maybe it won't be. Maybe this will be one of the other, that 60% there that doesn't make it. And if it is that case, maybe these videos will serve as a horrible reminder of that output. The re but the point still remains, I want to make these videos one way or the other. And I hope you join me on this journey as well. It's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out. I'm sure we're going to get lots of discussion in the comments below. Again, I'll try and answer them as much as I can. And again, I will update this regularly, at least once a month, until I have a unit here in the studio. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll wrap things up nice and easy here at the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Good and bad, why not? Knock it out. And otherwise, have yourself a lovely weekend and I'll see you soon.